live from the Jack and Jones Shredder Studio in beautiful CC at the University of Cincinnati. It's the Dennis Daniel Show. Tonight's guest, video game voice actor Charles Martinet. Plus, John Pokemon and the Dennis Daniel Show Band. And now, here is your host. He is the first ever recipient of the BearCast Radio Lifetime Achievement Award, Dennis Daniel. Gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you have once again entered that great warp pipe into BearCastRadio.com's greatest talk show segment, The Dennis Daniel Show. I am your host, the original Daniel brother, and the first ever recipient of the BearCast Radio Lifetime Achievement Award, Dennis Daniel. And joining me as always, he is the Luigi Two Boy Mario, the boss of the Mon John Pokemon. What up, what up? Yeah, you see, I get power up, you get one up sound. One up. Now, last week on the show, we had none other than professional wrestler and WWE Tough Enough contestant Jeremiah Riggs. Now, John, wasn't Jeremiah fantastic? He was. He sounds like a like a really cool dude. I think we found a new drinking buddy. Oh yeah, oh definitely. I would love to have a beer with that guy. We're gonna go down to uh, Mississippi soon and uh, hang out with him. That's gonna be a rager. Play the big truck. Rage my show face me off. Show the way to the next whiskey bar. Yup. But today on the show, John. We have got such an iconic guest on our show today. You don't say. I, I, I do say. Tonight on the Dennis Daniels Show, video game voice acting legend Charles Martinet. Yay. Now, for those who might not know who Charles Martinet is, he is the innovative voice behind the second greatest set of brothers in the history of history, with us being the first, Mario and Luigi, the Mario Brothers. What? That's right, John. I gotta ask you. I gotta ask you a very, very, very important in question. Well, I've got to give you an answer. So why don't you go first? Why does everyone love Mario? It's just a classic. It's the the Mario franchise has forever. It's it revolutionized what we know as gaming today. Yes. From humble beginnings, it started off as a, a side-scrolling game, yep. then became Super Mario Brothers, a, a classic in itself, yep. and then it went on to have all kinds of great sequels, including the one I'm holding right now, Super Mario Brothers 3, which is believed to be the very biggest selling game for the Super NES series. Yep. Yep. I mean, Super Mario 3 redefined what it meant to be a Mario game. Yes. You know, with the introduction of Tanuki Leaves, uh, new warp zones, bigger and better bosses, and of course, finding the big daddy of all Bowser. But of course, Mario has gone on to have such an incredible career. You know, every Nintendo console has its definitive Mario series. Mm -hmm. For the Super NES, probably Super Mario World. For the NES, Mario Brothers 3. For the N64, Super Mario 64. Yep, that and, was one of my favorites. And even with the new generations like the Wii, we got Super Mario Galaxy. Galaxy was good. The, the Mario Kart Wii, classic. Yeah, Mario Kart it's Wii. Just, it's, it's a franchise. It's almost, it's up there with the likes of, you know, Coca-Cola. Everybody knows what Mario is. Yes, before Pokemon, before Legend of Zelda, before Metroid, there was Mario. Yeah, everybody knows it. And of course, everyone wants to know, who is the guy behind Mario? Charles Martinet, a guy with a simple dream, a dream to bring entertainment and warm moments to the masses through the generations of time. And I'd say he's accomplished that. Oh, he's accomplished that and then some. That, yeah, for sure. But not only does he do the voice of Mario, he also does the voice of his brother, Luigi. That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario! <laughs> <laughs> what was that a clip from? That was from the Super Mario World Kart Toon series. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, gotcha. And that's become quite a popular internet meme. Yep, yep. Mario has also been in, in movies. He's had his own cartoon series, three cartoon series. Yeah. And one of them had a live-action segment featuring WWE Hall of Famer, the late, great Captain Lou Albano. Hmm. Mario has had such an impact on us. I mean, if you are a true gamer, you had to have played at least one Mario game in your entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for us, it was 
Oh, we, we we even had. I bought an N sixty four just so I could play a Mario game. Yeah, I and, had the uh, I had the original Super Mario Brothers on my phone. That's right, and I've like I said, I got an NES with Super Mario Brothers three. Yep, just instant classics. E- even on the DS with the new Super Mario Brothers and games like like Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, which he voices also Baby Mario and Baby Luigi. Man, he does all of them. He, he does it all, and he also does. The Wario Brothers. Oh, that's Wario right, yeah. and Waluigi. Oh, those rascals. Those rascallions. Yeah. <laughs> those yeah. scoundrels. But Mario, he takes after my own heart. You know, he's big. He may not be the most handsome character, but he, he's still loved by generations over. Yep. And John, I think we connect to Mario so well because we all have a dream of being Italian and dodging barrels thrown by a giant monkey. Yep. That's that's something I've always aspired for. Or fighting turtles with spiked shells to save a princess that just can't seem to stay without getting kidnapped. Or, you know, grabbing the leaves and flying. Gra- grabbing this, or the cape. Or the cape, yep. Or, or shoot fire out of their hands. Yep. That, that's truly epic stuff. But anyway, John, let's get right down to it. Are you ready? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. I'm ready. Our guest today is a critically acclaimed video game voice actor known as the Mario Brothers in the Mario franchise. And we have him here on the show today. So without further ado, give it up. He is the one, the only, Mr. Charles Martinet! Mr. Martinet, thank you, and welcome to the Dennis Daniel Show. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Johnny. It's me, Mario. Yeah! <laughs> that is... That is that, Epic! That's almost giving me chills. Oh, almost. oh, 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 that was a stage clear. Oh, that was so much win. Winning. That, that was winning, but Mr. Thank Martinet... Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! You, you're, Hi guys, how are you? We're doing great. I gotta say, growing up playing the Mario games, every game was better than the last. You know, we got to do so many great things. We got to fly through the heavens with wings on our cap. We got to throw giant monsters into giant spikes. We got to race on roads made of rainbows. That didn't sound very manly, but that was still awesome. It was and, always the hardest level on oh, Mario oh, Kart. Rainbow Road, that was a pain in the butt. Can't, t- can't tell you how many holes in my wall I punched because oh, I couldn't, couldn't oh, get past it. Oh. <laughs> I gotta say, it's truly an honor to speak with a man who has voiced possibly the most iconic character of the video game franchise. Everyone knows who Mario is. He's a household product. He never gets tiring, he never gets old, and with every new incarnation of the Nintendo consoles, he becomes bigger a- and better. Well, you know, that, that is such a tribute to the genius of Mr. Miyamoto. He, he creates the most incredibly wonderful, fantastic, fun characters, and then the best adventures, and keeps one-upping himself <laughs> over and over and over again. Every time he comes out with a game, every time a new platform comes around, I mean, you know, he, he is the, the, the father of all video games. To me, the, the genius behind so many great, great millions of hours of fun and entertainment for the world. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just a lucky guy who gets to go, Wahoo! Here we go! You know? <laughs> Oh gosh, I uh, I think we're I think we're gonna split our sides laughing. That, this that show. never gets old. That never gets old, and that voice just to be there whenever we accomplish a certain level. You know, when we heard that after completing the hardest level, and I can tell you stories about getting stuck on games like Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Galaxy, uh, even the new Super Mario Brothers. I could just get caught on them, but hearing that at the end, that was like, yeah, you beat it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's true. Thank you very much for playing my games. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, hey, you're welcome. <laughs> so I guess we can go in. Uh, what got you interested in voice acting? Well, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I guess for me, I had been an actor for 10 years doing the theater. I, I was never having an, an intention in the world of being an actor. I was going to be a lawyer and couldn't get the classes I wanted at UC Berkeley and said, you know, if I can't get the classes I want and I have to take these these classes I, I forget it i'm going to take a, some time off and i and i did and a friend of mine talked me into taking an acting class i took an acting class shook like a leaf i was absolutely terrified standing in front of people 
and uh, all of a sudden I finished a monologue, and they, people said, wow, you're so calm and, and so not nervous. It's great. And the next thing I know, I'm like, okay, let me try that again. And suddenly I'm an actor, and then doing theater for 10 years, and then corporate videos and training films and radio and things. And all of a sudden, you know, it was just, it was literally, it was at one point I was doing a television commercial uh, uh, for Orchard Supply Hardware. And the producer, after shooting the, the image of, you know, the guy with a pitchfork and his wife, the American Gothic painting? American Gothic. Yeah. yeah so I, 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 he said, well, do you do voiceover? And I said, of course, you know, like, like what's a voiceover? But just read this copy, you know. Uh, oh, it's a buy hardware, the right item at the right price right now. Great, that was perfect, you know. And so that was the beginning of my doing voiceovers. And I'll tell you, it's, it's been absolutely a, a, a thrill and a joy. I love doing radio spots. I love doing TV spots. And, of course, the most fun thing that I can possibly do is uh, Mario games. Yeah, now, um, do you have any kind of educational background in voice acting, or, or do you have any kind of background in acting altogether? You know, I went to the Drama Studio of London in England for a year and, and got personal, you know, that training and did, you know, that, that wonderful sort of like, uh, uh, you're, you're in a camp with a bunch of people and all you're doing every day is living, breathing, eating, sleeping, acting for, for a year, and that was a terrific training thing for me and you know voice was one of a part of it singing was part of it and uh, physical things stage combat acting and things and and uh, that sort of education really sticks to you and i i always say if, if somebody's interested in acting you know it's it's great that you can start right away by observing people and seeing what they do and 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 learning and, and imitating and watching tv and cartoons and imitating and 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 coming up with ideas for things but there's nothing like a, a little training to to really get you going with that you know BearCastRadio.com, this is Dennis Daniel Show. We've got Charles Martinet, the voice behind Mario and Luigi. Now, how did you get discovered by Nintendo? Thank you for asking. That's a really fun story for me because I, I had been doing acting for, I guess, 15 years or 20 years or something like that. And, 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 uh, well, 15 years. And, and I, I got a call from a friend of mine. It said, you know, you, you, there's this audition for a trade show. You know, a trade show, you know, you, you usually go and you speak about, you know, inside this HP 4868 multiprocessing computer, there are 48 vectors of RAM memory. And, and so I, I'm thinking, well, I, I do good with that. And he said, but it's, it's for a show in Las Vegas. And you've you got to go do this audition. And I said, you know, I never crash auditions. I can't possibly go crash an audition. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional, you know. And I, I said, all right, what's the address? And I'm sitting there thinking about it, sort of on the beach, relaxing. And, and I go, okay, I'm going to go. And I walked in the door late, and uh, uh, the camera was in the bag. The producer's walking out the door. And I said, oh, can I please just read for this? And he looks at his watch, and he looks at me like, like you know, oh, man. You know, I'm almost free. And he goes, all right, all right, all right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll set up the camera. Uh, you, you, you're, you, you get yourself ready. So what, what I want you to do is, is uh, you're going to be an Italian plumber from Brooklyn, right? And there's going to be this real-time animation system where we're going to glue these contacts to your face, and, you know, you're going to talk in this character's voice, and the audience is going to see the character on a TV screen. And we have absolutely no idea whether this is going to work or not. So just, you know, make up a voice for this sort of character, Italian plumber from Brooklyn, make up a video game or make up any sort of sort of thing that you want, and, and you start talking, and whenever you stop talking, that's your audition. You know, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, okay, Italian plumber from Brooklyn, you know, hey, how you doing? I'm under your sink here. Don't bother me, all right? And I thought, well, you know, I, if it's going to be people all over the place and talking, and I don't know what they're, could be young people, and I like to be really nice, so I, I, I thought, okay, make it a, a nicer, lighter voice, and lucky for me, I'd been playing uh, Gremio and Taming of the Shrew some years earlier in a theater production, you know, Gremio was a nice old Italian guy, I talk like it is, and I thought, well, then I make him younger, and, and, you know, that would be fun, and I could just talk about anything, but, you know, what do you... What do you, a video game, how do you, what's a, you know, what's in a video game? I mean, I played Pong and Space Invaders and Tank when I was in college, but I, I didn't know anything of the, the, the modern video game pheno phenomenon, and, and certainly not a plot in a game or, or, or anything. So I, I thought, well, I'll just start making stuff up, and, 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 and I suddenly hear action, and I turn to the camera and I said in the voice that you hear today, I said, hello, it's me, Mario. Okie dokie, let's make a pizza pie together. You go get some sausage. I'm going to get some spaghetti. We're going to put the spaghetti and the sausage in the pizza. Then I'm going to chase you the pizza. If I catch you the pizza, then you got to chase me with the pizza. Then I'm going to eat the pizza. Then we're going to make a spaghetti meat the ball. And I just, I don't know what I said, but I just kept talking and talking and talking about, you know, chasing each other around with 
meatballs and, and pasta dishes and you know and, and and I suddenly heard stop stop okay thank you stop talking that cut there's no more videotape and apparently I guess I I, I was having a great time so I just talked for you know, 30 minutes 40 minutes or something and uh, guy goes uh, okay well we'll uh, we'll be in touch thank you and of course. For an actor, we'll be in touch means there's the door, kiss of death, goodbye. You know, so I said, okay, thanks a lot. I'll go back to the beach and watch the sunset. Uh, you know, but I had a great time. And I, I, little did I know that as I walked out the door, he got on the phone and called uh, Don James up at Nintendo and said, I found our Mario. I got him. And that was the only tape that he sent up there. And that was, that was uh, 20 fantastic years ago. Uh, actually, more than 20 fantastic years ago. And it's been more and more fun every year ever since, really. Uh, working with Nintendo is, is such an incredible joy and so fun. The creative teams of Mr. Miyamoto in Japan and the creative teams here in, in, in America, absolutely fantastic. And making the games and talking about the games and, you know, and of course meeting fans and things is another, it, it's just great. It's just, it's made my life so full of joy and fun. You started working at 1987 for Nintendo, which is the year I was born, as the voice of Mario at, a, at the video game trade show, like you said, and attendees would walk up to a TV screen displaying a 3D Mario head that moved around with the screen and talked. And this was called Mario in Real Time, or M-I-R-T. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what it was like? Sure. It was, you know, it was, it was tremendous fun because we, we were at CES back in those days, and, and uh, people would walk by, and I'd have a hidden camera and a hidden microphone, and I could see and hear them, but they could only, you know, see Mario. And so I'd see somebody walk by, oh, look at that, you got the red hat on, just like a Mario, mamma mia. And suddenly they'd look at me like, how, can, how do you know I have a red hat on? Well, I'm looking right at it. Of course, he could use an M on it like my hat. You know? And you know, suddenly a dialogue begins, and, you know, you can play around and have a great time. And we actually still do this, Mert. It's, it's awesome fun. We're doing it in July at the Nintendo World Store in Manhattan. So if you're around Manhattan uh, uh, through the month of July, I think Tuesday through uh, Sundays for two hours a day, I think it's 12 noon till 2 p.m., you should come on by and say, hello, you're going to give us a great chance to talk to Mario and say, hello, Mario, where's Luigi? <laughs> it's really fun. That sounds like it would be a hoot and a sock full of yowza. I just got to say, I would love to do that. Of course, Manhattan is, and you know, no broke. Maybe I should go and uh, bash a couple of question blocks for some gold gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great fun. You know, it's, it's, it's all about having, you know, people have a good time. And it, it's, it's the wonderful thing, people getting to talk to, to Mario as though he's r r right from the game right in front of you. And it's, and it's so sweet. Children of all ages come and, and, you know, Hello, Mario. What are you doing there on your TV instead of inside my game? You know, oh, don't worry. I'm going to be there when you get to home. Really sweet. Really fun. I bet the graphics have certainly improved from 1987. I guess the floating head now. I guess is more of a. Is it more of a full body body now? Or yes, it... full body. It's a wonderful motion to it, and you know, little surprises. So if you come by, you'll see some uh, some neat stuff coming from Mario. It's really really going to be a lot of a lot of great time for a lot of people. I hope. Well, hopefully, some of our listeners in the uh, great city of Manhattan will take you up on that offer and uh, head over there next month and check out the Nintendo World Store. I hear it's a, hear it's a very nice place. I, I, it used to be the uh, Pokemon Center. Yeah, it is such a great place. And the thing is, the designs are always changing. Every time I go back, as we often go back at Christmas and, and uh, in July, and it's, there's, there are new things, new products, and products that you can only buy at the Nintendo World Store. There's like nowhere else in the world you can do it. So it's like, whoa, look at this thing. Whoa, look at that thing. You know, if you, from, from sandals and slippers to toothbrushes and tooth, uh, toothpaste and, and T-shirts. Every time I've gone in there, it's been like, oh, I, have, I want this. And I want that. I want that. I want that. It's <laughs> Reminds me, oh, I gotta yes. go cash in my club Nintendo points. Uh, yeah, I, I got a good, I got a good bunch of those saved up. I'm deciding on whether I want to get the Hana Fuda trading cards or the Mario fan. They, they both look awesome. I mean, I, I gotta get these before the, before the end of the month because my points run out. That's the great thing. That's what I love about Nintendo. They're always finding some way of rewarding their their users it's uh, if, if, even if you just buy a game you can register it and get points and then use those points to buy all these cool things they've got tote bags they've got fans they've got bookmarks 
and, and they've got gold and elite status. And the elite status, a year ago, I believe, they could get either a Mario hat with the um, M like Mario wears or Doc Lewis's punch out, which is an exclusive Wii download. And it's amazing because uh, I didn't hit elite. I, I hit um I hit a uh, gold and I got a little uh, little calendar with all these Nintendo characters. And of course, the first one, New Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so cool. I remember la- last year too. Too is, is seeing, uh, the the totes that you were mentioning. It's little backpacks, and and there's like a backpack of of Yoshi and a backpack of of uh, you know, all the different characters that are so cute. It's amazing. And of course, there's one of Bowser with the you know the pokey turtle shell, which is just it's hilarious. You've got to see that. I try to get some of this stuff on eBay. They actually, for the elite status for last year, they released this statue, and it came in a little question mark box that had Mario, Luigi, the Princess Toad, and Bowser, and, and everyone. You go on eBay, that thing goes. Last time I checked, hundred and fifty dollars. Wow, it's very really? it's very rare. No, you have to earn enough points, which means you got to buy a truckload of Nintendo games, or take your friend's system serial number and register it and get the coins. But I tell you, uh-huh. those points, totally worth it. Totally worth it's great, it. Isn't Not it? only yeah. do you get a trophy, you get bragging rights. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing how much this stuff goes for. I mean, at one year, I believe, they release a special collector's edition of CD for the soundtrack for Super Mario Galaxy 2. It's, it's amazing. They even had a, a gold pin for gold status members, and it was just, it was lovely. And I would love to get my hands on some of this stuff. It's just, it's truly amazing. It's now, wonderful, isn't it? It's really, it's so much fun. I think that's the thing that's so great about Nintendo is that the dedication to fun and dedication to the fans is so absolutely present in everything that they do. It's, and that, for me, makes it such a joy to work with, with Nintendo as an actor. Uh, you know, it, it's just, what, what could be better than working for a company that you know absolutely loves what they do? I mean, there's everybody at Nintendo loves Nintendo games and loves the platforms and loves the fans and, and has a great passion for their work, you know, whether it's designing the graphics or doing marketing and PR or, or, or you know, selling things to the, through the stores or, or whatever it is. It's like everybody loves what, what they do, and that's, that it shows up in, in the products. It shows up in the promotions and the ideas that people come with, you know, the, for as you're talking about these wonderful uh, awards and wonderful things that you can get. It's, it's just everywhere in the company, and that's, that really makes it fun for me to, to, to see every day what's going to be next. BearCastRadio.com, this is the Dennis Daniel Show. We've got Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario and Luigi. In 1995, you debuted your voice for the P- Windows PC game Mario Fundamentals, which, it, which, for those who don't know, it was like a, a collection of games like Backgammon, Checkers, Go Fish, you know, card games like that. But I think the voice was more exposed in 1996 with the release of the iconic game Super Mario 64. How did it feel going from doing these trade shows and these interactive hidden camera windows to now having your voice heard all across the world as the iconic Mario? Well, I'm going to tell you, that was a magical fun, fabulous experience. You know, I, whenever I saw Mr. Miyamoto, I would say, Papa, as, as Mario, you know, and he would smile and laugh. And, 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 you know, meeting him at the shows, he is like, to me, the most amazing genius. And he creates these incredible things. And he's just the nicest guy, you know, it's, it's just like anybody else that you'd meet on the streets, like, oh, hi, how are you doing? But, but friendly and open. It was amazing. And so when he said, you know, yeah, we want Charles to be the uh, to, to, to the to the voice in the game. It was I was so very grateful and so moved and so excited because I flew up to Seattle and it's wonderful tradition. We sort of we, I fly up and we look at the, the videos and drawings and things of what's going to happen and have sushi for lunch and then you know we start this work and at that point everything was brand new. And so ideas were flying from all places. You know, we always do like a script, and then we do improvisation, and there's sometimes some things like, you know, what, what are we going to do here? Like if you put the control down, we're thinking about sleeping or something like that. You know, and so some, somebody somewhere, I don't know even who, where it came from, but all of a sudden I was going, spaghetti, ravioli, 
a lasagna, a mamma mia, when you put the controller down. And so, you know, that just to me, it was just such a magical recording session the, the whole way through and uh, one that I will absolutely never forget. And everyone since then has been magnificent, too. It's always fun, but... But knowing that people were going to hear the voice in the game was really special, really wonderful. And that's, you know, again, thanks, Mr. Miyamoto. There, there's a, you know, Mario in 3D, uh, once again revolutionizing the whole video game industry, as does the 3DS, as does the, you know, <laughs> each platform, the Wii, just completely revolutionizing the way fun is being, you know, had in, in the world. And, and uh, thank you very much. I gotta say, Mario 64, when I played it at the demo desk at Toys R Us, I was hooked instantly. I was, I, I, it was amazing. You know, seeing Mario in a fully rendered 3D environment, even for those graphics at that time, it was like, uh, half my brain was shooting out of the back of my head just playing through the game and, and you know, climbing up, climbing up Bama Mountain. I'm getting ready to fight King Bama. And then it goes black and I hear, it's me, Mario. Thank you for playing Nintendo 64. Who's next? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's so great. And I'm like, no, Mario, I almost had it. I almost had him. <laughs> yes, I actually, I actually got on my knees and I went, Mario! Like, Con! Oh, uh, it was. Oh, uh, but I, and then I eventually bought an N64, and oh boy, we were hooked. Mario Party, Mario Kart, the, the Mario 64, Paper Mario. You, even though you weren't in it, which I, I think you should have been in it. I mean, of course. Well, then you got in, in at, the, at the Thousand Year Door, and that was that was also a very very good game. Also, all these all these groundbreaking games. It's it's it, it's amazing, and your voice is in them, and, and people are going to remember them and remember that for a long time. And it, it's I think it's going to even transcend history. I hope so. I hope so, because if, if, if there's one thing that I could give to everybody that, that's listening is, you know, in life, do what you absolutely love to do and express the, your passion and joy and follow your heart. And as you do that and do what you love in life, you, it, it's remarkable the way the journey unfolds, you know? Oh, yeah. It, and it doesn't matter, too, what it is. You know, if your passion is you know, being a garbage collector or, you know, being a plumber or an electrician or or being a graphic artist, whatever it is, you know, doing that with passion and joy and expressing yourself th through your through your work and through your life. It's it's what it's all about and, and it, it makes the it makes the whole trip so much fun. Yeah. You now, know? And what what an honor and a joy for me to 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 know that that something that I have done it, it gets to you know be enjoyed by people and that people really do enjoy it and and as you say I hope it lasts forever because I hope the games keep on coming forever. I mean, with with the announcements at E three this just a couple of weeks ago, I, I I am I am ready to just lose it. I'm ready just to lose it and get excited. So exciting, isn't it? Oh, it's it's definitely exciting. I mean, Luigi's Mansion two. I love yeah. Luigi's Mansion. It, it was an amazing game, and and for the first time, if you don't count Mario is missing, I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I like Mario games, but I'm pushing that one to the curb. That that was not a Mario game. That was not even a Mario game at all. That was just. That was a horrible abomination, and <laughs> it, it should not have had Mario in it or Mario's time machine. It, it's like the angry video game nerd said. Mario doesn't belong in a in an in a educational game. We want to run our brains out. I, I get enough education at school. I don't want to have Mario teach me about the Declaration of Independence. That ruins the magic and charm that Mario has. I don't know. Have you, did you never do Mario teaches typing? <laughs> to be honest, I I I never. We had read, write, and type. Yeah. I mean, great stuff. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, I understand it's, it's trying to get kids hooked on on, on, on on learning, but if the gameplay doesn't match up to the quality that we've come to expect from Mario, it's just a waste of time. But educational or not, these games are horrible abominations of space and time that give insult to the very fabric of nature itself. In other words, they suck. Uh, well, you know, I don't know about that, but I do know Luigi's Mansion is an awesome game. <laughs> it's like it's like Ghostbusters, but Nintendo version. 
Well, yeah, and, and, and you know, Luigi. Mario, I'm coming. Luigi, get me out of here. I mean, it's just terrific fun. That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario. <laughs> if you've ever seen the Super Mario World cartoon, you've heard, that's Mama Luigi to you, Mario, and that little tss. It's a, they had an audio recording error, so you get that. It's a, it's a very popular joke on YouTube. If you've ever seen, like, the rips on the uh, CDI game Hotel Mario, which is just... Uh, uh, have you ever seen Hotel Mario? No, I don't think I have. I, I haven't. Was it was it at E at E three this year? No, 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 no. This was back. This was back. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Let me um pull up the intro. This is the intro scene to it. You got to hear this. This this is this is headache inducing. <laughs> Nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look! It's from Bowser. Dear pesky plumbers, the Koopalings and I have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. I dare you to find her if you can. We gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us! If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. So as you can see, Mr. Martinet, not the same quality as the <laughs> any YouTube this when you get home, you are gonna you are gonna wanna just cringe. It's just <laughs> oh, I mean, and, and they said that well, it's was, nice, though, isn't it, that the, the Mario games can inspire so many, so much creativity from so many people in the world. <laughs> oh, but it, 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 it breaks, it breaks so many norms, and it has such the cheesiest cutscenes. And one Mario says, "You know what they say? All toasters toast toast." And it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh! It's like you want to just, you, you just want to end it. You just want to just to turn it off, turn it off. It just if you if you've seen it. You would agree with a lot. They're not up to snuff. They're not. They're not the par that Nintendo. This is actually. They've actually got licensing from Nintendo to, to do this. So uh, now the only wow. the only Mario game that that was kind of like this Mario Paint was awesome because of that music composer and that was that was just amazing. You know because you could make if you've seen YouTube YouTube Mario Paint these guys they have made full versions of songs like Bohemian Rhapsody through the fire wow. and flames. Uh, Beethoven uh, and, pieces. And, it's it, it, it's it's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. I, I know Mr. Koji Kondo does uh, so much music for Nintendo games, and I'll tell you, he is another absolute genius there. But it's great to hear. I mean, it is really fun to hear people doing lots of creative things. You know, it, it's just it's all inspiring. You know, if that's what fun is, it's contagious and inspiring, and it makes you do more, things to create more of it. And that's 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 the best. So, did you go to E3? You know, I really want to, but um, unfortunately, they they limit it to people in the industry who who specialize in video games, and we're just we're just getting ready to you know branch out into video games. We've mostly been doing voice actors from anime, but we do want to start getting more into video game aspect too. Because, however, we do have a friend. His name's Cole Ross. He does a lot of video games, and I think he would love to go to E3. You you would absolutely love it. I mean, if you just when you walk in the door and you see Nintendo's booth there and how magnificent it is and people everywhere and the, the booth is full of people, it's beautiful, every detail is to, to perfection. And then you, you walk around going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you know, in the, in the, in the booth, the, the Super Mario game for 3DS, Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart, you know, Paper Mario, uh, to, to just see those things first right there, it's uh, really... Really amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I would have gotten. And then to play the weed, play a little preview of Mario Party, maybe or Legend of Zelda. <laughs> I would have gotten a 3DS, but I just I just made a payment down on a Nintendo DSi. But again, again, another great game on the on the DSi, the Mario vs. Donkey Kong franchise, Minis March Again, you know, Mini yes. Mayhem, but both very very interesting game. They're actually, the very first one, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, is a remake, in a sense, of the 1990 Game Boy game, Donkey Kong, which is an extension from the arcade classic. Yes, 
Yeah, amazing, isn't it? So many great memories, aren't there? <laughs> oh, it, 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 it's it's mind blowing. I mean, I've got a, I'm getting a, I'm getting a headache just thinking about all the awesomeness. Now, you also later went on to become the voice of Luigi, Mario's brother. How did you go about developing his uh, voice or character? You know, we I I, I I go up to the studio and they have drawings and uh, they talk. We talk about the characteristics of the character. You know, what what he what he sound, what he's a, you know uh, like as a person, and then just came what came out. You know, oh Mario, oh okie dokie. You know, just the more timid and and uh, I love Luigi. You know, because he's he may be afraid. But he is always the courageous one that goes through with it despite his massive terror and fear, you know. And then the same thing with uh, Wario. We actually did a, a Wario uh, um, uh, Mert. We called it Wurt. And, uh, you know, we went into uh, CES and there was Wario in front of me. Uh, Hello, Dad. Have a rotten day. <laughs> wow. And we just talked to him talked about uh, the character and what kind of person he was and then uh, you know then along came well Luigi hey everybody cheat about me <laughs> and that was great fun and then uh, I guess it was in a Mario Kart game when we were recording in Japan all of a sudden there was Mimi Luigi and baby Mario Yahoo! really fun I gotta tell you I just started playing Mario and Luigi partners in time that's, oh, I love that. It's game. incredible. I, I, I especially like the little random part where you go, and then Luigi's just going, oh, yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like what do you say? You're like, okay. So it's like, I, I, I love it when they say, babies. Hey, yeah, I know. It's so fun. I love that game. Actually, you're right. I think that might have been the first game that had uh, the babies in it. And, and what, a, what an absolute treat that was. So fun. And then I'm going to spend a lot of time on the table. And then I'm going to say, Luigi, but people are going to come back. They're 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 going to come back. You know? What? Lots of fun. Can we get a translator? Gosh, you know, if this were a radio show, we would need subtitles. Oh, boy. Um. BearCastRadio.com. This is Dennis Daniel Show. We've got Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario and Luigi from the Nintendo franchise. Now, aside from the Mario franchise, you've done voices for Super Punch Out for the Super NES, Skies of Arcadia, and Shadow of Destiny. How does that differ from doing the Mario franchise? You know, it's uh, I, I have a lot of fun doing video games. Uh, just doing the voices is really fun because you get to really play it big and play it strong. And I, my, my theater background, I, I always like the size of acting in, in theater. And, and when you do a sort of video game, you, you get to have a sort of cartoon-sized uh, playing, and that, that, that adds to the fun of it. But, you know, of course... To me, the, the most fun thing ever is recording Mario games, and, and particularly, you know, when, when there's a game that has Mario and Wario Luigi and Wario Luigi, Baby Mario and Baby Luigi in it, it's just, it's just one big festival of fun. It really is. So, yeah, other games are, are totally fun. I love every job. I still, when I get someone calls me and says, hey, you know, you, you, we got you, we got a job for you Monday morning, I, I'm... Dancing around the house, I, I love everything. But when uh, when they call for a Mario game, it's uh, it, 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 there's something that's that's very uh, very happy happy inside of me when that happens. Those six Mario characters alone, that's a six pack of awesomeness, and you know it's going to be a great game if you got every, if you got the whole cast and crew in there. It's just it's amazing the whole kit and caboodle. And I just I, I just again I love I like Partners in Time. I'm playing a. The uh, Bowser's Inside Story game. It's you know it's amazing how far these games have come. You know it's it's like taking Mario and Final Fantasy and mix them together and it's, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. And some of them have really hard levels to them. I mean, it's like it's not like a very very easy. Although anybody can play a Mario game, which I totally love. And yet at the same time, there are levels you can go to like that I I won't personally ever see except when I watch my nieces and nephews sort of play the game. You know. It's it's really fantastic. You can just keep playing at any level. That's what I love about Nintendo games. They're easy to pick up, easy to play, and you don't have to be an Einstein to play them. I mean, guys like like Xbox and the PS3. You know, they know they they do all these games that require strategy and difficulty. But Nintendo, yeah. ever since the, the NES in the '80s, simplicity and enjoyability. Nintendo will always be my first love. I mean, 
I mean, I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have never played a Legend of Zelda game, so I'm I'm, tr I'm really trying right now. But I've at least played or attempted to play every Mario game under the sun. I mean, Super Mario Sunshine. I spent a whole summer just trying to beat that game, and even when you beat the main story, you still got to get all the star sprites. And some I know. Thank goodness for the memory card. Remember that's when when, when the memory card came out. I was so oh, grateful for oh, that. Yes, I mean games like. Mario, like the original Mario Bros. Mario Bros. 2, you got to, you, you, you wanted to stop, you were tired, you had to keep the game on. Didn't have the same yeah. feature. And I, I believe that first started in Super NES, where you could save your game and continue. And that's, you know, it's, it's amazing how far technology and gaming has come. I, I really wish my friend Cole Rotzer, he, he's, a, he's a big game nut. But I'm surprised that, you know, next thing you know, we're, we're, we have game consoles that take memory cards, SD memory cards, and the game cartridges are no, are no bigger than a, a pack of gum. Yeah, astonishing, isn't it? Absolutely, it's, it's it's amazing the way technology is growing and memory and 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 just everything. It's who knows what's going to be next. I, Mr. Miyamoto knows what's going to be next, but but nobody else does. <laughs> I, I I mean I think the Wii U. I think you know I know I've got my reservations about having the screen in the controller because if you drop it and it breaks, you're hosed. But I think mm -hmm. you know that might be the next next breakthrough step in video gaming you know you're playing in the middle of a game but your, your your dad wants to watch the big game so you can now take the game and play it like like a game boy it's like it's combining two two cons classic consoles in one you're playing classic games like on the wii and now you can play it like a game boy yeah it's it's amazing isn't it absolutely absolutely terrific i'll tell you when i was at e3 i couldn't stop playing <laughs> Super Mario in 3D. I mean, that was just, uh, it, it's like the new Super Mario Brothers Wii. Do you remember that? That was, uh, that one, I just, I could never stop playing that. Every time there's a Mario Brothers uh, game, I just, I absolutely go crazy for it. I absolutely love them so much. Really, so much fun. I got to tell you, w one game, and I'm not a big sports fan, but one game that me and my brother got behind, Mario Superstar Baseball. That was just so oh, much yeah. fun. Yeah, it was, and uh, yeah, I love that game, and I love how you get to pick the teams, and then players are actually better when they're on your team. Like Luigi and Mario play better together than if Luigi is on, you know, somebody somebody else's team, which I, I really love that. I like, it's pairing up, so, you know. You you could pair up Mario and Luigi, Bowser and Bowser Junior, Wario and Wario Luigi, Princess Peach and Princess Daisy, you know, and it would make these teams, and they had all these great uh, great stages and to play on it. I think that's one of the reasons I, I, I enjoyed playing it. It's just, just all the versatility. And even with the new Wii game for baseball, you can insert yourself or your Mii character and play along with them. It's like, it's like the fantasy pairing up. I know. That is so great. I love, I love Mii's. <laughs> oh, oh, I love Mii's, too. It's, it's, I, I can't wait for the next step. Photos. They take photos from the console and they put your face in there, and it and it's just it, it it's ama it's amazing. Mies have done so much. I mean, they even have community contests where they can where they try to create Mies. And I know this because my sister entered and she actually won. She won the uh, Princess Peach one. So it, I'm like, oh, gosh, Katie, why are you doing all this stuff on the on the me? It's amazing. It's but uh, again, it's it, it's amazing how far games come, and I, I cannot wait to see where it where it where it will lead us. Now, besides doing voice acting, you've also done several live action pieces, including appearances on Matlock, Nash Bridges, and NYPD Blue. Yes, NYPD Blue with Dennis Franz's butt. That's, a, that's an internet joke there. Um, how does it differ from uh, doing uh, voiceover work? You know, I actually wasn't on NYPD Blue. I, I don't know how that got on my, my thing, but, you know, it's uh, Nash Bridges and, and, you know, things like that are really, they're really fun, you know, but, uh, you know, the, the acting style is so different because it's smaller and it's, it's the intensity is, is very internal. And you don't have to, with a film, you don't have to do any more, anything more than think something and it's conveyed. It, with a with a television, you you don't have to do much more than think, you know. Uh, but you see on TV actors, there's a little bit more facial expression than you could possibly have on a movie. And then in theater, of course, you have to make it big enough to show the person in the very last seat. You know, if you're going to eat an apple, you, you can't hide it. You've got to you've got to show it. So you know, so everything is different depending on on the media. 
but everything's really fun. Like I say, I just I have so much fun doing any job. It's it's just really really what a it's a great way to make a living. Lots of fun, and I'm a I'm a believer that you know that you can think of voiceover or acting or any sort of career as extremely competitive because there are so many people there uh, trying to make a living. But if you sort of look at it from another thing that that it's not really competition that what you're doing when you go to an audition or do an audition is you're bringing yourself there and what you're doing is an end in itself to do the audition to do the best expression of yourself and the best expression of what you see and feel and think as that character and so you know it, it, it that's that's reduces the sort of pressure of something by wanting to go and just do the best you can do with everything that you do. Well, it, it it's sounds kind of like, like that in life, too, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but it, it sounds like, you know, you're getting the best of both worlds, and I don't know, I, I read all this on Wikipedia, so I guess Wikipedia lied to me. Any video games, Mario and non-Mario, that, that you've worked on, the, that, that, that's your favorite? Oh, I gotta tell you, I mean, Mario 64, uh, always just absolutely... Uh, every time I see that game, I just I, I get these great feelings of joy and happiness and great memories to it. And I'll tell you, the first time I saw Super Mario Galaxy, I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, I had goosebumps over all of my body. I couldn't believe it. I was so amazed by that. And then Galaxy 2, the same thing. And when I picked up Super Mario Brothers Wii, I... Just, I mean, I was giddy with excitement and joy. I was laughing because, you know, when the, 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 everybody's dancing and the, it's just like, oh, this is just so fun. You know, I, I got to tell you, Nintendo games, they, they really touch me. They really, they really get me. And, and I, I just, uh, th that in particular, uh, Super Mario Brothers Wii, which just was a game that just, I, I was over the top joyful. Well, what did you think that. of the uh, Super Smash Brothers series where they would take the Nintendo characters and, you, and they could fight each other? Yeah, that was kind of cool, you know. Some, for some people, they absolutely, that's their favorite game, you know, Smash Brothers. We want another Smash Brothers, more Smash Brothers. You know, for other people, it's Mario Kart, more Mario Kart, more Mario Kart. You know, it, that's one of the great things about Nintendo is that, that there's something great for everybody. You know, every sort of game style that you want to play, there's something there. I mean, there's Resident Evil. I mean, that's not, that's not the sort of game that I resonate to so much right away. But, you know, and I always thought that Mario should, should announce it. Resident Evil, woohoo! You know, but it's 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 just uh, it's all about creating the fun. I think with that, Mr. Marinet, you've just opened the floodgates to a thousand and one fan fictions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mario! Oh, Mario Brothers meets Resident Evil, or like they did on the Robot Chicken, Mario Brothers meets um, Grand Theft Auto. It's it's totally yes. it, it's the stuff that nightmares are made of. I'll tell you that much. Yes. I, 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 I think at one time uh, doing murder, I was talking about Resident Evil, and I said, it's just like a Mario game, except completely different. Absolutely nothing the same. <laughs> Gosh, that, that, that would be a really, that'd be a really messed up Mario game. Mario game Resident Evil fighting zombie Koopas and zombie Goombas, and that would just, that would really, that would, that would just kill it all. Now, we're coming from the College Conservatory of Music here at the University of Cincinnati. We have a lot of vocal majors, voice majors, uh, drama majors. Do you have any advice for those who want to get their break as a, a voice actor? Well, sure. You know, uh, honestly, you know, I really think that voice acting, I mean, obviously we, we, some people have a, a talent that's geared a certain way. You know, some, some people have that deep, you know, deep pitch voice and they have a passion for, you know, coming up next on the 7 o'clock news. You know, they, or some people have a real joy of doing characters and want to do lots of fun characters. But whatever you want to do in voiceover, there, there's a way to study it. And part of that is by, you know, honing your instrument, as they say, with, with acting, the sort of Stanislavski and acting uh, things like theater acting, is, is, is do everything. 
do as much as you possibly can. It's become a vacuum for uh, observing people and observing how they sound. You know, somebody with a big jowl might, might sound more like that, you know, or I might sound like that, you know, I got a big thing. You know, start looking at people and, and, and listening to them and watch cartoons and, and listen to the way a certain character is going to sound and, and imitate it and create something new from it. Or, you know, when you see a drawing, you can bring that drawing to life. Or if you are into creating commercials, you can open up any magazine and read any uh, magazine ad and read that as a voiceover talent w with, with the intention of that, you know. So you, you start by becoming the vacuum, like a baby learns everything. You, you, you watch and they're just listening to everything, watching everything, so that you can emulate that and create from that. So you become their, you know, a sort of creative machine that way. And then, too, I think it really, it really helps to, to take a communications class, to take an acting class, to risk going out there on the edge. You know, when you audition for something and you're absolutely terrified of, of, of doing it, of rejection, of everything else, that's the time to go out there and do it anyway. Because, you know, no matter how badly you may feel like you fail, it's a great experience in life, you know. I, I remember that when I first went to the ac acting school, I went up on my lines with, I mean, we had to, you know, it's like you arrive and it's like, okay, everybody, you just got on the freight train that's going 200 miles an hour. So, to, you know, Monday morning we want monologues. So Tuesday when we want scene class, da, 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 you know, and, and I got up in front of people and I, and I went up on the lines. It's like, I, it's like I started the monologue and it's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my, I was so embarrassed. You know, because there you are in front of all of your peers about to start this thing, and I start shaking like a leaf, you know, and it's like, it's okay, because I learned from that experience the importance of, of, you know, grounding myself beforehand, making a choice on a monologue, and then going for it instead of looking at 85 monologues and trying to find the perfect one, you know. It, it, like everything in, in life, it's an experience to learn and grow from. And so challenge yourself. Get out there and do it. And, and as I say, you know, follow your heart and follow your passion and follow your joy. Because as you live from this place of expression of yourself in whatever you do, the, the path of life becomes so full of joy. You know, it's like when you have gratitude you suddenly have more reason to be grateful. When you have love, you know, you have more reason to love. When you give love, you get, you get more back. You know, that's the way life kind of works. And I would say to anybody is do what you love. Do what gives you joy. And, you know, in college, you don't always know what that is. I, I had absolutely no clue, thinking I was going to be an attorney, but then ending up an actor. You know, you you, you got to kind of just also, if you don't know, just keep experimenting, keep enjoying, keep, keep having fun, keep looking for your passion, keep looking for your joy, because you'll absolutely find it. There's no doubt about it, you know, because you, you, you can't hide from life. It comes and finds you. Oh, it's like so a, it a heat-sicking missile, man. It will find you no matter what you yeah, do. Yeah, it was. And, two, the other thing I would say to anybody, you know, is life is short. It, it happens so fast. And life is very tenuous. You never know really what's coming next. You know, we all experience uh, joys and tragedies in, in, in our lives. And you don't know, you know, the, the movie of your life, you don't know where the ending is going to be. So really live each day. You know, it's cliche to say like it's your last. But live each day with joy and passion. When you wake up in the morning, you know, what can I do today that I've never done before? What can I, what can I experience? How can I be my best? What, you know, seek that sort of question that, 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 that you can answer by living your life. Well, that, that, that but that's is, probably a little bit more philosophical than you were asking no, me. No, no, that, 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 that is fantastic. I tell you what, that is fantastic right there, Charles. I just, I, I got to say, wow, that's, I got a lot to think about now. That's quite amazing. Cause, I mean, if you don't enjoy doing what you're doing, why are you doing it in the first place? Yes. Yes, and if you're in a nine-to-five job and you're working and you're not having fun, it's like, oh, my goodness, nine, that's eight or nine hours a day out of the 12 that you're 14 that you're going to be awake? Come on, that's crazy. It doesn't make any sense, you know? 
I, I totally agree with you. You know, it, just, it makes no sense at all. BearCastRadio.com. This is the Disney Show. We've got Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario and Luigi, on the air. I think it's about time we start taking some listener questions. That's right. Head over to Twitter.com slash sure. ATExplosion and uh, let us know what your questions are. And uh, head over to AltTasteExplosion.com. You know what? I'm going to open up DJ BearCast. That is DJ B E A R C A S T on AOL Instant Messenger. If you got a question, hit us up there and let us know what is on your mind. Now, our first question comes from Maurice Bear. Have you ever said the famous lines of Mario in real life? Well, you know, I I, I, I do all the time. Actually, when I, I I I wake up in the morning happy, I go here we go. You know, sometimes I I find myself walking around the house going da 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 da, woohoo, and I. It's just the, the the voices and the fun, the 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 the, the happiness that uh, Mr. Miyamoto created in those characters is always kind of with me. But I don't use it like I don't go out in public, you know, and, and say, you know, oh look, I, look look who I am. I, I'm I'm a little bit shy about that sort of thing. Ah. But I do love to. I do love the voices, you know. I really, really do. All right. His next question is: What is your favorite line to say? Thank you very much for playing my games. <laughs> I think so, or here we go, or mamma mia, or okie dokie. Now, see, I am particularly fond of woohoo! Yeah, that's true, huh? Woohoo! It, it's just, it's, it, it's all that energy, you know? It, it's like woohoo! Whoosh, and it's like, whoa, oh, it's awesome! <sighs> I have no. Yeah. What, what am I doing? <laughs> Love it. It's great. Okay. The next question is, which Mario brother do you think you resemble more personality-wise, Mario or Luigi? Well, I, you know, I'm sort of a split right between the two because there's a, you know, the, the I would say that uh, I have a little bit of timidness uh, of Luigi, but I also have a real sense of fun and joy of life and facing every challenge with a yahoo, you know, when I whenever I can. Let's say I always aspire to be more of of of, of both characters because I, I think they're both uh, magnificent. Uh, I want to say I want to say people, but they're both magnificent characters, and each each have so many great strengths. Our next question is: Would you be interested if Nintendo started making a Super Mario Brother cartoon series like they had with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, Super Mar- the Adventures of Super Mario Brothers Three, and Super Mario World? I would absolutely always love to do anything that has to do with Nintendo. So if they did a cartoon series or a movie or anything like that, I would be absolutely thrilled. But I have to tell you, you know, I I, I kind of tend to think uh, they are so great at making video games, why would they, you know, go out there and, and make films. I don't know. It's, it's completely up to them, and as I always say, only Mr. Miyamoto knows for sure, but, you know, uh, uh, what they do is so great. And, and, and that's what I love, is, is the games themselves. Well, have you ever seen the uh, live-action version of the Super Mario Brothers movie? Yes, I did. With uh, John Leguizano and... Um, uh, what's the other actor's name? Hey, let, let me pull it up. I'll pull it up on Internet Movie Database. We'll figure... I heard it did not get the uh, warm reception that many thought it, 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 it was. It should have gotten. Well, you know, it's always a funny thing, isn't it? That sort of uh, that, that sort of movie, because people have expectation that's going to be exactly like the game, and other people, you know, don't know what to expect. And you know, uh, from what I've I've heard, a lot of people absolutely they love Mario games so much that they love the movie just because it was so fun. You know, John Leguizamo. Yeah, like was on, he played Luigi. And Dennis Hopper was King Koopa. Dennis Hopper was Kim, King Koopa, that's right. And who was the English actor that played Mario? Uh, Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins, that's right, Bob Hoskins. I don't know how I could forget his name. But, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I've heard from quite a few people that they, they just they love that game. They, they love that movie. They watched it every day when they were, they were four years old. So there it is, you know. Yeah, I just I don't know how why it only has a three point eight star rating. I, I, I bet you it was that uh oh who was that who's that one rate that one movie rater guy uh he rates the movies by stars uh what's his name what's his name yeah it, uh, you it, got me he's the same guy that gave Laser Blast two and a half stars which kind of I guess kind of deserved but you know a lot of people complain that video games don't always transition well into movies games such as Doom. Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within, kind of been 
theatrical bombshells. Uh, huh. do, do you think with today's technology, you know, they could make a very, a very well done animated version of a Mario Brothers movie? I, that's a very good question. I I don't know. I mean, I suppose I suppose, but you know, I, why not? You know, it's a lot has to do with the producer and director and the the writer and the concept and 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 you know. But you know, I guarantee you one thing: some people will love it and some people will hate it. No matter what you do in the creative world, you just got to uh, you know, you do your best. I uh, I totally agree. Our next question is. What is your opinion on the Super Mario Brothers animated series and the live segments that featured WWE Hall of Famer Captain Lou Albano? If, did you, if, have you ever seen them? You know, I have. I saw them in a video collection, and, and, and I watched a couple of them. I think they're absolutely charming and fun, you know. I'm, uh, I'm certainly glad that I'm doing the voice in, in the games, and I think the, the voice that they were doing in the, the... You know, as I was saying before, it, the, the games are so much fun that it's the fun is contagious and you can't help yourself but wanting to create something or do something with it or say those words or enjoy those words and you know these guys came along and said oh oh this is so much fun we gotta make a tv series you know and more power to them and more power to everybody who uh... who picks up the creative ball and runs with it our next question is is there anything that you can tell us about any of the new mario games that are coming out for the three ds and the wii u Yes, I can tell you everything about them. They're going to be absolutely spectacularly fun. I wish everybody could have been at E3, you know, taking a look at the previews because I am so excited about these games. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, Super Mario, Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart, Kid Icarus, Uprising, Legend of Zelda, uh, Paper Mario, Picture Lives, Rolling Western uh, on the Wii, Legend of Zelda, the, the Skyward Sword, Kirby Wii, Wii Play, Motion Mystery, Case Files, Malgrave Incident, uh, Mario Party. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's just, there are so many great games, and on the DS there's going to be another uh, Professor Layton in The Last Supper. I mean, it's just, I, I'm telling you, I was so happy at E3 seeing the games. So, yes, I mean, obviously, I can't tell you anything about the, the, the inner workings of the games, but I can tell you, if you could have been there, you would be electrified with excitement because these games are going to be so absolutely fun. I think that it's, everything's going up a notch. They're like Emerald Lagasse. Bam! Bam, bam, bam. bam. I, I, again, I think that, you know, just the videos, they had me all be like, ah, it's, it's going to be awesome. They're bringing back Tanooki Mario. Oh, yeah. God. You know, and he's, got the, and he's got the full suit. He's flying around. It's, I'm ex yeah. I was excited when I first played uh, Mario Brothers 3, you know, when I got that yep. when I got that leaf and turned into Raccoon Mario. I was like, yeah. out of the way there, losers. <laughs> eat, my, <laughs> eat my dust, Goombas. Oh, Isn't that great? It's just so it's just so much fun. And I'm telling you, I absolutely I could not put down Super Mario uh, for the 3DS. I could not put it down. I mean, they had to like shove me away from the control. Go away! Stop playing this game. I, it's just so much fun. I, I just I, I can't even begin to tell you. Absolutely great fun. You know, they're, they're, they don't push me away, but, but it's like, okay, I've got somebody else who wants to play. Okay, 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 okay. It was, it was really hilarious. You should have told him, to, hold on, I voice, I voice for this game. You back off, Jack. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, it's so funny because I can't do that, but I, I, I actually do make the sounds sometimes when I'm playing the game. Uh, and, and I get very excited playing the games. You know, it's, it's like, whoa, whoa, ah, you know, or, or of the famous, whoa, you know. When I die, it, it, I get so excited. And I don't know about you, but when when you play Super Mario Galaxy, do you when you're going upside down as Mario, do you turn your head? <laughs> well, no, we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at him go! Oh, hey John, look at him fly! Whoa! Ooh. We're like, yeah. Whoa! I got the feeling like I'm flying upside down. I'm I like, know. I'm holding the Wii remote and the nunchuck. I'm like, whoa! It's so great. <laughs> it is just, it's so much fun. That game is so addictive, and it's just, yeah. it's, it, it's got such a high replay value. I, I haven't played Galaxy 2 yet. I'm dying to play it, play oh. with Yoshi. It, 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 I, I, think that, I think that that game just might blow the first one out of the water. 
I, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people think it's the greatest game ever made. And I, and I got to tell you, it is just an astonishing game. It, it's, just, it's just amazing. I think it got the best reviews of any video game in history. I don't know, but I, it's like wowie zowie. What, Mario 2 awesome. Galaxy 2? Yeah, Galaxy 2. Galaxy 2 might be the best video game of all time. We will not confirm or deny it, but people have been saying best video game of all time. So, 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 so take that, Sony and Microsoft. <laughs> okay, our um, final question is, is there's something you'd like to say to the generation, to the masses, if, if there was a legacy or something that you just want to say to your, to your entire audience, what would it be? Thank you very much for playing my games. Mamma mia, you number one. Woohoo! No, 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 Mario. You are number one. I will stand up. I will bow. I am bowing and in, in, in just, in, I'm, I'm humbled. I am, I am so honored to play your video games. They are just, it's the greatest thing. I know I say that a lot about Zelda and Pokemon, but Mario, I will, I will, was born a Mario fan. I will go into the ground a Mario fan. And you know what? I'm going to run out right now. I'm going to give me a hat, some suspenders, and a cape. Woohoo! Woo Thank you very much. Okay, well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Martinet, I I thank you so much for doing this with us. It, it was truly it's truly an honor, and hopefully we'll have you back on the show when you get some more information about the new Mario games. It's incredible. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Dennis, and then thank you so much. It's a real real pleasure, and thank you very much to the Dennis Daniel Show. Woohoo! Oh yeah! Bye bye, Cincinnati. Hee hee. All right, this has been the Dennis Daniel Show, and until next time, good night, Chachi. Mario, take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. Come on now, do 